Hello guys, welcome to Forensic Extract and today I am going to discuss about identification. So identification is very important for deciding or determining individuality of any person. So first of all the definition, for, uh, definition of identification is that identification is the determination of individuality of a person based on certain physical characteristics. So identification can be complete identification if we know each and everything related to any person or it can be partial identification if we know uh, if someone knows about uh, age sex and all uh, this is a partial identification so now what is corpus delicti corpus delicti is basically the body of offense or the essence of crime it means the fact of any criminal offense like corpus delicti of a murder is the fact that a person died from unlawful violence when the main part of corpus delicti is the establishment of the identity of any dead body and infliction of violence in a particular way at a particular time and place so basically the corpus delicti is the body of any offense or the essence of crime now various uh, identification data are maybe race and religion sex age stature fingerprinting and footprints teeth, tooth and scar marks, tattoo and scar marks may be there, then various anthropometric measurements, speech and voice may be there. So these are various identification data. So now we are having, uh, first is a race. So race can be determined by complexion, color of eyes, hair and clothes and skeleton. So uh, different races can be determined. Like we are having three races like European uh, are called as Caucasoid and the uh, Africans are called as Negroid and other Eastern uh, subcontinent, the people belong to Eastern subcontinent are called as Mongoloid and uh, basically Indian are having mixed species. So Indian are called as mixed. They are having intermingling of various features of different races. So uh, based on cephalic index, we can decide different races or we can differentiate different races. So first of all, what is cephalic index? It is the maximum breadth of the skull divided by maximum length of the skull multiplied by 100. So based on these measurements, we can divide the skull is in different uh, 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 different parts like long headed or dolicocephalic is the cephalic index between 70 to 75. These are pure Aryans and Negroes. The second one is mesocephalic that is medium headed in which the cephalic index is between 75 to 80. These are Europeans and Indians and Chinese. Now brachycephalic are short headed in which the cephalic index is 80 to 85. These are Mongolians. So based on the measurements of the skull or cephalic index, we can differentiate different races. Now we are having here Negroid. In, in Negroid, the medulla of hair, the hair contains medulla and cortex and cuticle. So medulla is non fragmented in Negroid, uh, Negroid but it is fragmented in case of Caucasoid and Mongoloid. Now the hair cross section is kidney shaped in Negroid. The hair are oval in case of Caucasoid and round in case of Mongoloid. So more or less uh, these findings are going to differentiate between different races. Now one important point is the shovel shape incisors seen among Mongoloids. Now third criteria is sex. The sex has to be determined in case of marriage, in case of divorce, in case of legitimacy, impotence or rape etc. Now uh, we are having sex chromatins or bar bodies. These are small plano convex mass lying near nuclear membrane. So these are first demonstrated by Dixon and Tarr. So number of bar, bar bodies in uh, in a particular person is a number of total number of chromosome minus one because it is a inactivated X chromosome. So we can estimate, we can determine the bar bodies in the various samples like buccal smear, saliva, hair follicle is used in determination of sex. In buccal smear, it is present in about 20 to 80% cells in the females and 0, uh, uh, 0 to 4% cell in males. So bar bodies are maybe seen, maybe a, uh, helpful to differentiate between male and female. Now, a small nuclear appendages of drumstick form present in the neutrophil in the female that is called as Davidson Smith body or Davidson Smith body is seen in female uh, that is in neutrophil. Uh, neutrophil is small, drumstick body is seen in neutrophil. 
Now we are having various reagents to stain various chromosomes like acriflavin shift reagent is used to stain X chromosome which is uh, bright yellow spot which appears as bright yellow spot. Now quinacrine dihydrochloride is used to stain Y chromosome which is demonstrates fluorescence. Now this X chromosome cannot be made out in decomposed bodies. So we can uh, estimate, we can determine this X chromosome, X or Y chromosome by various staining methods only in live or living person we cannot decide or uh, the dead bodies but not in decomposed bodies now what is intersex intersex is having different characters of both sexes in one particular person or inter intermingling of the characters of both the sex in one person so we are having four types of uh, the intersex first is gonadal agenesis it means that testis or ovaries have never developed it means the nuclear sex is negative second one is gonadal dysgenesis it means that at puberty the testes and ovaries fail to phase to develop various types of gonadal dysgenesis are like klein fentel syndrome nuclear in which the nuclear sex is female and pattern is xxy the chromatin it is chromatin positive and diagnosed when delaying onset of puberty and testicular atrophy will hyalinization of some manifest tubule is seen histologically the second one is Turner syndrome in which the nuclear sex is male and ovaries do not contain primordial follicles so called ovarian dysgenesis and the pattern is exo most common heart disease are like bicuspid aortic wall disease coarctation of aorta and septal defect and aortic dissection are seen in Turner syndrome so we are having sexual agenesis sexual dysgenesis there are various type of sexual dysgenesis like Klein-Fenter syndrome and Turner syndrome now hermaphrodites one is true hermaphrodites these are the bisexuality with an ovaries and testicle or two over testes are present with external genitalia of both sexes so this is called as true hermaphrodite now the second one is pseudo hermaphrodite in which the gonadal tissue of only one sex is seen internally but actually appearance is of opposite sex so we are having two different types of uh, pseudo hermaphrodite first is male in which the nuclear sex is xy but uh, sex organ or sexual characteristic deviate to female form because of testicular feminization then female pseudo hermaphrodite nuclear sex is xx for the sex organ and sexual uh, characteristic deviate to male form because of adrenal hyperplasia so these are different types of intersex now what is concealed sex it means the criminals may conceal their sex to avoid detection by changing dress or by other method so there is a motivation to hide himself so uh, sex determination from skeleton by skull by looking over the gross feature of skull we can differentiate between male and female like the male skull is larger heavier and prominent muscular marking is having prominent muscular marking but a female skull is smaller lighter and smooth it's uh, not having that much uh, prominent muscular marking the capacity of male skull is around 1500 to 1550 cc but it's around 1350 to 1400 cc then steep for uh, forehead is steep in case of male and it is vertical and round in case of female the frontal eminences are small in case of male but these are large in case of female then a male skull is having small and square orbits but these are large and round orbit in female then the palate is u-shaped in male it is parabolic in female then male skull is having large foramen magnum as compared to female skull so these are various differentiating feature in the male the uh, forehead is steep but is straight in uh, the uh, uh, female skull more vertical frontal bone now we are having large menstrual process and bony markings are more prominent in uh, male skull as compared to female skull now on the base of mandible like male mandible is larger and thicker but it is smaller and thinner in female the chin is square shape in uh, male but it is rounded in female then angle uh, angle obtuse angle of the body with ramus is less obtuse as compared to female so the female the uh, chin chin is uh, square shape in male and it is rounded in female this angle angle between ramus and the body of uh, the mandible is less obtuse in male and it is more obtuse in female so this is the angle which is less obtuse in male and it is more obtuse in female now we are having pelvis 
the difference between male and female pelvis is male pelvis is massive and it stands higher and more erect as compared to female pelvis that is less massive and cylindrical in shape now the male pelvis is deep funnel shape but the female pelvis is flat bowl shape then male pelvis is having shallow and less frequent peri peri uh, periauricular sulcus but it is broad deep and more frequent in case of female because uh, periauricular sulcus gives attachment of anteriosacroiliac joint a tertiary sexual characteristic this the, sac uh, the attachment of anteriosacroiliac joint is uh, the uh, 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 over periauricular sulcus it is considered as tertiary sexual characteristic now the acetabulum directed lateral in case of female it is directed anterior lateral in case of female now the foramen of obturator foramina is oval shape in male it is triangular with apex for upward and forward in case of female now the small and narrow greater sciatic nodge is small and narrow in case of male it is large wide and shallower in case of female but ischial tuberosities are inverted these are inverted in case of female but these are inverted in case of male now the very important finding is subpubic angle that is v shape or between 70 to 75 in male and that is u shape in female the pelvic brim or pelvic inlet is heart shape in male that is circular in female now the conical and funnel shape pelvic cavity is conical and funnel shape it is broad and round now evenly distributed curvature of sacrum and lower half the upper part and uh, lower half of sacrum is evenly distributed the upper half is almost straight now the sacral index is between 112 and it is 116 so these are the various features like this is uh, heart shape pelvic inlet and this is flat bowl shape pelvis is more erect this is flat flat bowl shape the subpubic angle is um, less it is more in case of female then these are these and uh, this is uh, the uh, notch that is small and narrow in male and that is la uh, large wider and broader in case of female now the sacral index is the breadth of base of sacrum divided by anterior length of sacrum multiplied by 100 so and the corporobasal index of sacrum is breadth of first sacral vertebra and divided by breadth of base of sacral multiplied by 100 so in male it is 45 in the female it is 40. five so these are various indices which are very important in differentiating between male and female now the sacral index is sternal index is length of meridian divided by length of body multiplied by 100 the value of sternal index is mean male it is 46.2 and in female it is 54.3 now what is ashley rule in male the length of sternum is more than 149 mm and in female length is lesser than 149 mm now the bicondyle width of female is in male it is between 74 to 89 mm and in female it is between 67 to 76 mm now what happens in case of advanced putrefaction sex can be determined by identifying uterus and prostate which resist putrefaction for a long time so the biopsy of gonads will be come from the diagnosis so this uh, is very important to identifying uterus and prostate in advanced putrefaction now the greater sciatic notch is ideal feature to determine the sex of a female child so this is the ideal feature the greater sciatic notch now for degree of accuracy in sexing uh, from adult skeletal remain uh, that is determined by krogman table so entire skeletal is having 100% sensitivity or accuracy for determining sex now the pelvis having 95% only skull is having 90% both skull and pelvis having 98% accuracy and long bones are having only 80% accuracy in determining sex so the best bone for determining of sex is pelvis so thank you guys and thanks for watching and we will be discussing the identification part 2 in next video so please do subscribe and like and thank you